If you play the game right, you can get within close range to elk if you really are quiet. If you're an archer, that's a great thing to do, but keep this in mind. If you do decide to bow hunt, what happens if out on that hill you see a 100-yard bull, a 200-yard bull, and he's not going to come in any closer, and you've limited yourself to archery? He may be a state record. He may be one of the better bulls you've ever seen or will ever see in your life, and he may be walk right on over that hill. So I would recommend, if you're going to hunt these animals, and take a bow, have your buddy with you, have a firearm that you're comfortable with, that you're really practiced with. Now, if you're going to use a gun, I would recommend sticks, a bipod or a stick, because you may be in a situation where if you're in the middle of the woods, all of a sudden, you look around and there he is, and you don't have a rest. You may be up on a hill where you have a shot down in a, in a valley, and you really want to get as steady as you can. Okay, if you like your deer hunting rifle and want to use that, you can, if if it is 270 or above, you can't go anywhere below that. Now, if you decide to use a handgun, it has to be a barrel over six inches, a bore diameter over 270, and when fired, the bullet shall produce at least 550 foot-pounds of energy at 100 yards. So know your ballistics. Make sure you're legal. Now, if you're hunting with a bow, remember this. Equipment restrictions are plainly this. You must have a broadhead. Now, here's the deal. Make sure you have adequate penetration. That could be a heavier arrow, a heavier broadhead with a wide cutting blade. That's very important on a big animal. I have been out elk hunting several, several times, called them in for people and watched this happen time and again. You shoot. The animal doesn't even flinch. He may turn around and respond to the sound of the gun. He may be hit through both lungs. They're such a huge animal. So if you make a shot on that animal and he doesn't respond, take another shot. Take another shot. If you have to shoot two or three times, make sure that you keep shooting until you know this animal's hit. Another one of the obvious things that we have to think about, but we do have to think about it, is that shot. When you take it, Make sure you have a backdrop. Make sure he's not skyline. Make sure there's not another animal behind him because you can get in trouble real quick. One thing I found fascinating with these elk is the act of calling one in. It's a lot like turkey hunting. And people say, oh, you can't call an elk in in Kentucky. Yes, you can. I've done it. If you're drawn in an area, if it's an open area, on a reclaimed mine, if you're in the middle of the woods in Knott County, I mean in the thickest, hairiest cover, calling can bring one right into you. Now, here's a big cow, a female elk. She may weigh four or 500 pounds, big animal, but here's the sound they make. Now, you don't think about a great big animal making that kind of noise. If you are in an area and you start hearing that noise, hey, guess what? You got some cow elks close to you. Now, if you've never elk hunted or heard the sound of a bull bugling, you're in for a treat. Listen to this right here. Now, that elk makes that sound for a variety of reasons. He's letting everybody know, hey, I'm the king of the turf here. Don't mess with me. Now, if you respond, That can invoke a response from him or make him very angry and make him come check out and see what's going on, which is ideal. Now, if you've got one in the aggravated mode and he's coming towards you, it's a pretty rewarding experience. Now, another little trick to bring him on in a little bit sometimes, take a big stick and whack it against a tree and rub it. A lot of times they'll take their antlers and just thrash and just when they're in an agitated state. So that can make him think that you're another bull and you're challenging him and guess what? It's on at this point. Now, there are certain things that is the same when you're hunting deer and elk. You have to cover your scent, and I would recommend any kind of soap to bathe in that's uh, anti-scent. And I even wash my clothes in this stuff. If you can, at night, uh, store these clothes away, hang them out in an area, where they can get air in a local area where you're hunting. Any kind of camouflage will work, anything that breaks up your pattern. So you don't have to get real specific on that. 
you know, it's going to be hot the first part of the season, so you might want to, you know, don't bring out your thick wintertime camouflage because you'll burn up. Now, if you're drawn for the cow or bull hunt, here's the law. You must wear orange, and that means all hunters and persons accompanying them must wear orange. Solid, unbroken hunter orange, color visible from all sides on the head, back, and chest. And the bill on the cap must be solid orange. More than likely, you're going to want to have somebody along. You can have two people accompany you. Now, if you decide to get a guide, that's something you can do. If you decide to bring a buddy, and it's a good thing to have other people along because once the elk is down, the work begins. Make sure you have ice on hand. Make sure you get this thing processed as quick as possible. If you have to quarter it up, put it on ice. Do that as soon as possible and get it somewhere where you can process the meat. Okay, so you have your animal down, bull or cow and you want to take this to a taxidermist, make sure, absolutely sure, you cut way behind that shoulder and come down right here. We got a picture of Harry Whitehead showing where to cut on this animal right here. Or take the whole animal to your taxidermist and he can take care of that for you. But make sure, again, that you're iced down so you don't spoil the meat on this animal. You've been drawn. Congratulations. I'm jealous. Here's the deal. Practice, practice, practice. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the animal. If you're going to spend this much time, this much money, do it right. Now, again, if you have any questions, this book, The Kentucky Hunting and Trapping Guide, can be found anywhere they sell hunting and fishing licenses. If you want one from the department, 1-800-858-1549 can answer a lot of your questions. This should be the greatest experience of your life, and if you're careful, it's going to be the most fun you've ever had. Hope to see you out there in the woods or on the water. Good luck. <music>